Right guys, welcome down to another lesson recap. And I'm down here with Dan, who I'm gonna shake your hand. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I've got back on the hand shaking. <laughs> We've just had another lesson and it's been another interesting one. So over the last three months now, we've been working through swing changes and exactly what I've been doing within my technique. And last time we left here really with my swing looking better than it as I had done, like from a technical standpoint, from a physical standpoint, actually how I was using my body and the numbers were showing it really well, but I've struggled to actually implement it. Just yeah. simply because of the way I've not been able to practice too much with my wrist and been mainly playing. But today, using a few different drills and using a classic just swing shorter, three quarter swing technique, <laughs> we've actually managed to get some of these movements in. So let's talk a little bit through about what we've done because certainly from last time, if you remember, it was all about how I was moving my right foot, well, not all about, but how I was moving my right foot, how I was moving my hips, and then how I was bringing the club through, which all looked great, but it just wasn't quite there. Wasn't and quite and there. You, the big thing was for me is that you, you weren't sure with the pelvis how that movement was starting no. to come through on your golf swing and you thought that maybe you weren't quite getting it and it was interesting when you got the pelvis move in um, and you did it where it was a little bit exaggerated you, you actually had gone a bit too far so it showed that you had it but it was just actually piecing that together with how the upper body and the club kind of all worked together absolutely so the feeling that i got and i really settled on was just to get my left hip higher than my right during the downswing but it just wasn't working. It was throwing my club into some really funky positions and hitting some really weird shots, which is what I've been seeing in my comp round. So we've just worked again on the different feelings. And this is important, you know, if you if you are having lessons, there's absolutely no guarantee, and I've seen this with the lessons I give and I'm sure Dan has as well, there's absolutely no guarantee that even if you work on your swing within a lesson and it's wonderful, there's no guarantee that you're gonna get all the way when you're practicing, when you're playing. Yeah, it, it just doesn't happen. It's too complicated a movement, like in total. You know, you yeah. couldn't need more work on it. And sometimes the feet and the feels change. You know, because you know that feel and movement of the pelvis that you showed me at the start of the lesson was a bit exaggerated mm. on its own relative to the shoulders not coming through with it. Whereas you'd have said that in the last lesson that was working perfectly, wasn't it? Yeah. As in its own feeling. So it's just. Obviously, there's evolution in the game, so it's just having having someone monitoring it can really help with that, can't it? Precisely. This will hopefully answer some questions, guys, about if you want regular lessons to just one-off lessons. You know, it's, it's worth having those regular lessons just to keep you going in the right direction. Well, I do would say that with golf coaches, <laughs> uh, but it is definitely worth it. So, what we've been doing today. So, from down the line, what you can see is obviously we've put this kind of homemade foam kind of post across the knees. And uh, the idea with this has been that we were finding that the knee was moving forwards, the right knee that is, a little bit, here's the arrow Daniel, this way too much in that transition. So, and that was obviously making the heel come off the floor, okay, too much where the bottom arrow is going and therefore getting a little bit trapped. So what we can see is we've got that right knee starting to move and we've got it tracing a line more, more diagonal towards the big toe of the left foot. Absolutely. And this is individual feelings, individual preferences and why this works because this, for some people, just wouldn't work. They wouldn't be able to get it. But my imagination here, I imagine that line continuing over my toes and just not getting my knee forward, getting my knee moving sideways and to the left. Yeah. And that's what worked for me but that's for me. Might not work for you, but that worked for me. The great thing has been, as you've started to get that, what we can see is that the club face is now a lot quieter through the ball here. Mm -hmm. So there's nowhere near as much chase in the hands. See the right foot's rolling, and the way the right foot is moving is starting to match in with what the right hand can do. Because obviously, if the right heel's closer to the floor, it means that the side of the right palm can kind of pressure down through the shaft a little bit more through this direction mm -hmm. and therefore the club face can just stay nice and square as we can see it is right here mm -hmm. so i'm going to look at it from the front view obviously on the right hand side here the big bit is just we can see that that pelvis is big time moving across and one thing that we found was to start off with the your head was moving forward a lot with it to start with yeah and now it's starting to really stay back a lot more yeah so that again that's a combination of feelings for me you know right knee right um right knee left hip moving left and back whilst head stays behind works for me might not work for you and again all this yes we're working on what i'm doing biomechanically we're doing what i'm in body but as far as what the trackman data is showing path is very very neutral not steep down into the ball 
and I'm controlling the club face more with my body. Yes. That, that, that's the feeling that I'm having to control it more with my body. So I'm not having to flip my hands quite as much, which, as you guys know, is a recurring issue. And the great thing is, as it's got shallower, that's got to be good for the wrist going forwards, hasn't it? Precisely, yeah. So not pounding out as much uh, turf and as much mat as so I would can, otherwise be doing. So you can see here that that pelvis is moving a lot more forwards and upwards because of this. And then we can just see, we're just working like these three quarters finishes here where everything's coming through together and definitely staying in spine angle a lot, lot longer. So kind of almost, if you like, the head's almost coming through as if it's on a bit of a pillow here, kind of, so kind of seeing it. That I, side I, am, angle. I am going to sleep well tonight. That, <laughs> that is absolutely no doubt. But, you know, this is showing the, first of all, it's all about, doing swings when you're changing that are more in control. Because I've been jumping straight from this straight into like my drive from my full swings and not giving it time to bed in by doing this practice with the three quarters. It also shows that sometimes training aids can work. Yeah. And they do offer something visual. It's something that people do ask me and I'm sure they ask you a lot. Oh, all the time. Do training aids actually work? They do if used in the right context. Because sometimes people are using training aids and <laughs> They're using it in a completely different way than what they should do and for things that they don't need to use it for. Now, this is very, very pretty much designed, well, not much designed around me, but designed for this purpose, isn't it? Absolutely. So. And we could see here, you know, where that knee was before and where that foot came straight up on its toe, didn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, the hands kind of wanted to go out and swivel a lot more here, a lot more chasey. And you can see now it's just... A lot more space coming in here. Right foot's working in a completely different manner. Where the club exits the body, you can see that's, that's where the club head was first coming through. Mm -hmm. Where it's first coming through. Now, you know, it's probably nearly a foot lower. Oh, yeah. It's big time. And as far as that shot was concerned, guys, that was 1.1 from the inside. Yeah. I think as far as Pat is concerned, 0 0.6 with the face. So even though it's a lower exit with the club, that just really shows that I'm using my body more and I'm not flipping it closed, not going too much from the inside, not having to manipulate the shaft as much as I was doing. So, you know, there's big, big alterations there, big changes. That one that you've just seen on the screen here, I'm going to drag over the numbers. Okay, so we can see, just enlarge them very quickly. Okay, so you can see there, that particular one was 2.7 out to win, 1.3 face angle. Not hit down on it that much, only 5.4. The one before was 4.8. And you can see both of those shots are really neutral flights. Mm -hmm. They're not moving much in the air at all. And you can see again that, that one that was out to in, it was lots of space through here. Right foot still rolling really nicely. And the club's kind of coming through on a very similar angle as the one after it and still staying in that spine angle, head rotating from a different position before you could see how the club kind of works up and over the shoulder a lot more. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, also I'm really happy with kind of how that's gone. I'm happy with just re restoring some of the feelings and then working on it in a different way. Just trying to find the right combination of feelings, which is the most important thing. You know, what works for me won't work for someone else. It is as simple as that. And that thing about reoccurring lessons, making sure that you're always moving in the right direction. And yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with how my swing was feeling now and how it's looking and then moving into May and certainly getting away to do some practice when I'm in California as well. So I'm buzzing after that. I'm really, really great. I'm, I'm really, really excited. So guys, thank you for watching. Dan, as always. Thank you. I can't stop shaking people's hands. I, <laughs> I was brought up correctly. That's what it is. Um, and guys, thank you so much. Please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you pop over to Dan as well. Subscribe to the channel as well. Amazing country content on there. It's well worth checking out. And stay tuned to some podcasts, which is going to be appearing on very soon as well. Already has appeared on one with Sky Sports and more to come in the future. Going places. <laughs> Look at that hair. Look at that face. How can he not go somewhere? So it's, pod so it's podcasts. That's why they like aren't, aren't real the way forward, really. Can't see any of that. So, guys, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.